All right, Frosty K, two-handed guide. Here it is. Now, I mean, come on, nothing better. You're just slamming out 400, 500k obliterates, just smacking stuff, and like, I'm not even that geared. I'm all that far geared, you know. I was raiding back. I think I haven't raided since like beginning of Heart of Fear. Like, I started with some friends, and you know, they stopped playing for whatever because they're nerds. I don't know, freaking nerds not playing well. Anyway, for Frosty K, you just start off, you just blowing stuff up, right? Just throwing out crazy hard obliterates. And that's what I want I want everyone to do, right? Now, it took me a little while to find the right rating dummy. I'm a little bit new to Horde and Org, so uh, it took me a bit to find. Um, but, like, there's where everyone starts. Can I click that dummy? But yeah, over there is, like, it's like where everyone practices their DPS, I think. <laughs> it's, like, always packed with people. Um, but that 85, or that d training dummy over there that's all by himself, is 85, and I don't really, I don't want to do that, I want to worry about hit and all that stuff, I'm actually, I'm not hit capped, um, <laughs> so that's going to hurt my DPS a lot, as as I said, I'm not in the best gear, uh, PvE thing, PvE is not really my thing right now, but I do want to kill Garage on normal before I do LFR, because LFR, let's face facts, is not rating, <laughs> it's not exciting, it's quite frankly, a pain in the ass. <laughs> just another chore to, for you to do. So I just want to, like, Raj has kind of been a dick, and I want to kill him. So I've been trying to gear up and uh, get into a raid team. Um, anyway, it's not about that. This is about doing crazy, crazy damage. And you know what? We got buffed, because, you know, why not? Uh, we were on the bottom of the meters uh, in the other expansion, or other patches of uh, Miss Pandaria, uh, except for the first one. We were pretty much... Um, with unholy dual wielding and single handed or two handed frost, we were 26, 25th, and 24th on the damage meters out of 26. So uh, it was kind of a shitty place to be, but you know what? Frost frost decays have taken over the top right now, so it's pretty cool. The buffs are pretty big, and you're hitting like a truck. It's great, right? So the one thing I want to talk about um, add ons super important uh, if you want to be better. As a player, as a person, just at everything, you should get recount. Um, and if, if you're, especially if you're competitive, just compete with yourself. Um, don't compete with other people or where you are in the ladder. Just compete with yourself, and you will see a huge DPS increase. The best way to increase your DPS is to get an add-on that doesn't affect your DPS. It's weird, right? Because it will affect you. So your biggest DPS increase is going to be recount. So right off the bat, Number one most important thing. Number two most important thing for Frosty Ks as two-hander <clears throat> uh, is getting an add-on to track your swing timer, your auto attack. I'm not a huge fan of add-ons, guys, but they are quite necessary, so I have the ones that I need. Um, so important. I can't tell you. If you want to throw out crazy hard obliterates, you need to track your auto attack. Um, let's go pull up Killing Machine real quick. Uh... Your auto attacks have a chance to grant you 100% critical strike chance um, for your next obliterate and frost strike. I don't like the way they worded that. Um, well, I guess, you know, it is or, but really I think about it as and because once you use it, it's gone. Whatever. So you can easily waste it on frost strike is what they're saying. Um, so you need to watch your swing timer for that reason because, watch, you're like, <laughs> you're going to be auto, you're going to be attacking something and you're going to be spamming frost strike. You're just going to be getting a lot more frost strikes than anything else. It's just kind of the way it works. Um, and if you don't have anything to track your auto swing, you're going to, like, attack with frost strike and then your global cooldown is going to activate. It's going to go around, around a little bit right here and then boom, killing machine is going to proc. And guess what? Frost strike is going to hit right about here and then it wastes your proc. And it really sucks. <laughs> really, there's nothing worse when you're Frost Decay and you just wasted a Killing Machine proc on your Frost Strike. And you have a Bur Obliterate sitting there. You got two runes, four runes, whatever. You got runes sitting there for your Obliterate. It's just like, pfft, Frost Strike. 100k crit. Woo! Right? It sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. So, uh, uh, getting your uh, add-on to track your swing timer will stop that. Um, let me show you that right now. It'll appear right here. It's a big, gigantic blue bar. That's as big as I can make it. I really want it to be the size of my screen. <laughs> just you need to be in your in your face. You need a, there's nothing more important. So right here, you can squeeze the attack. There's my swing timer. And then another one that's super important is uh, it tracks your cooldowns. puts a second a second value as in time a second value on all of your abilities that go on cooldown. Now, the thing that's weird about that is like you'd expect it only to work for things like Paladins, where like Crusader strikes a four-second cooldown, Judgment a six-second cooldown, whatever, I don't care. I don't want to be a Paladin. I want to be a Death Knight. And 
obliterate has no cooldown but the way that it kind of does have a cooldown is how you manage your runes and uh, I believe it's Omni CC that does that I could be wrong I get these two mixed up all the time I don't know why I just do um, but I believe it's Omni CC and uh, it will tell you e <laughs> even though it's not a cooldown it will tell you six seconds until you can obliterate which is awesome it's just awesome because when you have six seconds left on your obliterate and you got a killing machine proc and you're sitting there with like 40, 60 uh, rage. I'm going to call it rage, but we all know it's runic power. Um, you're sitting there with like 460 rage and you're just waiting. You don't want to wait six seconds for an obliterate? No. you got to use that killing machine on your proc strike and that sucks. It really does. But it's so important um, because if you're sitting there, no, um, the reason why the timer helps if you've got one or two seconds to your obliterate and uh, and you got a killing machine proc, you wait those one or two seconds. Three or more, proc strike. Because at that point, you're just wasting a potential proc. And, like, frost is so RNG. Uh, that means, like, random, basically. And, like, you hear a lot, like, R like you got to pray to RNG Jesus, right? Like, frost decays the pray to RNG Jesus for procs. Dear RNG Jesus, give me an obliterate proc. It's all I want. It's all I want. And of course, you know, like we'd be really OP if we just could obliterate with procs all the time, right? But that's what we want to do. Let's face it. <laughs> that's what you want to do. Just to pr proc all the time. Um, so I just want to go through your rotation a little bit and kind of talk about the um, nuanced part of, of Frost DKs. Because um, it's more than just obliterate disease, blah, 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 blah. So I got all my trinkets to proc. I want to pop all my cooldowns right there. And uh, also, let's stand behind the boss and not get parried real quick. I'm just going to build up some runic corruption because I know in my opener I'm going to get a lot more killing machine procs. Or I won't, and it's going to be a shitty opener. And I wasted too much time talking already. Um, so right there you can see I'm actually obliterating right as I auto-attack. Um, so it will just proc, and I won't waste a second with that obliterate proc. Um, you're also going to see me frost striking. I'm going to stop frost striking right about here just so I don't potentially waste that proc. Because with the latency... Uh, as you can see right there, it was right about here when I frost striked, and uh, the latency just made me waste it anyway. So it is a little bit sad, but um, it's something, since you can track your auto attack, you can see how bad your latency is real time. Um, the other thing is, like, when you were, I was out of runes right there, I had no runes, and I had no runic power. That's when you want to use your rhyme proc, because wasting a rhyme proc is not that bad, guys. Honestly, it's really not. Um, now, I was just kind of doing this just to go through the sake of that. Um, the most important thing you can do. Uh, I'm gonna put up a list up real quick, actually. Um, but like, the most important thing, like what you want to do as a DK, is you want to obliterate when you have a crit, when you have an auto crit, right? Now, that obliterate is not gonna hit as hard. It's gonna hit, actually hit 25% less if you don't have both your diseases up. Now, frost fever is gonna be on all the time. You just can't stop it. It's just <laughs> it's gonna be on all the time. Um, but Blood Plague is a little bit trickier, uh, that's why I have these two. Um, I will make another video about Plague Leech and Blood Tap some other day. Um, I don't like them, but they could potentially be a huge DPS increase. But I'm not going to use them, because it's simpler. Um, and I don't want to make my life more complicated for 5 to 10k more DPS. Um, which is pretty significant, even if you're doing 200k. Um, that can be the difference between a Berserk and a Knot. So, uh, you know, there's that. Um, or in PvP, a kill, or a not. <laughs> uh, you know, PvP always comes down to a lucky crit with between evenly matched players, you know? Anyway, so that's super important. Um, so I guess the priority would then be um, keep your diseases up and then obliterate with your killing machine. Then your next thing is actually Frost Strike. Like, in my mind, um, basically... Uh, I'm there, like, Frost Strike is my most important thing. I don't want to use my Rhyme proc. I don't want to use my Horn of Winter, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I want to just Frost Strike until I get a Killing Machine proc. And when I get that Killing Machine proc, then I want to make sure my diseases are on. Um, so it's kind of like a different look at DKs, because normally you're just like, obliterate, obliterate, obliterate. I'm in diseases are off, diseases up, obliterate, you know, whatever. And then, like, whatever gets you more obliterate. So I actually kind of prioritize it in Frost Strike is my mind. Um, and that helps me kind of slow down and uh, do better DPS. Um, <clears throat> now, that being said, uh, I want to talk about a couple other things, like Horn of Winter and uh, Howling Blast and Icy Touch. This is something that not a lot of DKs look at, and they don't really think about, um, but it will increase your DPS. Um, now, I was saying before when I had that time when I had no runes and no runic power, 
Um, I couldn't do anything, so that's when I want to use, at that time, I want to, I have to use Horn of Winter. It's not that I want to use, I have to use Horn of Winter. Um, so, like, what's really going to separate the good DKs from the bad DKs is when you use your Horn of Winter, um, and when you use your Rhyme procs, um, and also when you use Plague Strike. Um, now, between these two, you have almost 90% uptime of, uh, Plague, Blood Plague, I think it's Blood Plague, Blood Plague, and, uh, Frost Fever, so you shouldn't have to worry about it too much, um, but there is going to be like 10 to 20 seconds of downtime where you're not going to have blood plague. As long as you're doing these correctly, it's going to be between 10 and 15. Um, but anyway, uh, so it's not going to be that much downtime for your diseases. But so like in that 15 seconds window, um, you only want both your diseases up if you have an obliterate crit. If you're obliterating to get more runic power to frost strike, because what you want to do, especially with um, this is why I like runic corruption, this will stack. So like it's 2.5 seconds. Um, and if you get two of them back to back, it'll become five seconds. If you get a third one in that five second window, it'll bring you, it'll refresh it, not like it'll refresh it back to five seconds and then give you 2.5 more seconds. So it'll actually refresh it up to 7.5 seconds. So it's actually pretty awesome. Does it proc at a 45% chance? Hell no. That is definitely wrong. It's not a 45% chance. It is not every three swings even. So anyway, <laughs> ignoring that. Um, so like what you want to do is you want to use frost strike to build up all your runes for when you get a killing machine proc. So like that's why I like runic corruption. I can just stack 7.5 seconds. Like I want to prioritize frost strike until I get a killing machine proc, because now that I've got a killing machine proc, what if it procs immediately afterwards? Well, I've got 7.5 seconds of 200% rune regeneration. So it's going to be super awesome. Anyway, so <clears throat> what you want to do here. Um, is when that when you can't do any of that stuff, that's when you want to start thinking about your Howling Blast and uh, your Horn of Winter. Uh, I want to before I talk about that actually, um, Howling Blast, Icy Touch. Look at this real quick. Uh, Icy Touch is your single target, right? Oh, I just blood boiled. <laughs> Fat fingered my blood boil. Um, but Icy Touch is single target, and Howling Blast is AOE, right? So you want to use this when you're doing? No, it's not actually true. And I actually I don't like that Blizzard did this. I think they did it because of this. And uh, if that's the case, I would like them to see, like, let's do the damage real quick. Uh, Howling, or Icy Touch, right there, 14.5k. Howling Blast, f almost three times the amount of damage. 300% damage increase. And that's just for the single target part. Now, if I'm going to go hit some mobs, do I have AOE mobs? I don't have mobs over here. Um, but that'll hit for, like, 25k on the other mobs or whatever. Every other mob. And obviously apply our diseases in AOE. Which is amazingly helpful. Um, but so, like, Icy Touch, single target. I don't know why I just did that again. And then, uh, it's just retarded. And what I would have liked to see is, like, this glyph. Uh, it just makes your Icy Touch dispel, which is awesome in PvP. It is such a huge buff. Um, it's pretty much mandatory. But, um, if you don't need to dispel, Howling Blast is three times more damage. So what I would have liked to see is actually have this glyph um, give, make Icy Touch dispel and make it do like 75% less damage, but make Icy Touch your single target spell, because that gives you a lot more decisions to make when you're switching between your single target and your DP AOE DPS rotation. But, you know, that's just me. Um, it's not super important. All you have to know is that Howling Blast is, if you're not doing PvP, you don't need to dispel ever, or like you're not the dispeller in your raid, um, you can take Icy Touch off your bar. It's not important. Howling Blast is better in every single way. And also, Horn of Winter, just 20 second cooldown gives you 10 rage. It's amazing. Um, now, those are, like, Howling Blast and uh, Horn of Winter are the last in line of your priorities. Even if Horn of, or, uh, even if Howling Blast is free, it's not that important. But, here's the whole nuanced part of it. If I was in that point of time where I had no runes and I had no runic power, it is necessary. If I wanted to do something, it would be Howling Blast with a Rhyme proc. If you're doing single target damage and you're Howling Blasting without a Rhyme proc, stop. <laughs> Don't do that. It's awful. Um, it's a waste of a rune. Um, but you can use Horn of Winter. Now here's the other thing. is uh, you got to pay attention to your runic power. Um, mine tracks down here as well. Um, if you're sitting at like anywhere between 0 and maybe 60 runic power and you have no runes, you should probably be using Horn of Winter and your Rhyme procs. Anything above 60, you're getting kind of close. Obviously, 
Um, if you're at 100 runic power and you've got no runes, and you're using your Horn of Winter or your Rhyme proc, then you're wasting runic power. Um, so that's why like wasting a, a Rhyme proc isn't that important um, for D DPS, but using it at the right time to give you more runic power to Frost Strike is super important. So I wonder if I can get to that moment again. It doesn't happen very... Um, it goes by pretty quickly, so I'm going to just ignore everything I'm doing right now. It's not going to be a proper rotation. just want to try to dump runes, and then right here. So like that's like I had the rhyme proc the whole time, right? And I didn't use it until the end. So there's my proc, and I'm just going to wait for it. But this whole time, I'm going to be dumping some runes, and then and now I, I have to... Uh, <clears throat> I have to use Horn of Winter, excuse me, um, because I was only at like 42 uh, runic power, and so it's just better to use Rune of, uh, Horn of Winter there than <clears throat> Frost Strike. Now the other thing, to ev add even more technicality to it, especially when you have added this auto attacking thing, you want to Frost Strike here, and maybe, if, okay, let me get enough <laughs> runic power first, that would help. Um, refresh my auto attack. So here, then you might you risk it there. You might go off, but in in between that time when you're waiting for it to happen, if you don't think you can get two frost strikes off, it's a perfect time to horn of winter and use your rhyme proc. Um, so if you keep that in mind, guys, um, that's really gonna make your DPS skyrocket. And then uh, I'm gonna switch to another video actually to show you openers. Uh, this one went really well. Uh, I pray must have prayed to R and Jesus so hard because just everything happened at once. And uh, I'm gonna try to <laughs> mute my reaction. I was playing, doing some LFRs with friends, and it got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> I was kind of surprised at the damage that I could pull. Keep in mind, uh, I've got 506 eye level in this armor set, um, <laughs> and oh. 506 really? I thought I had 505. I might have had 505 at the time of the video. Um, but yeah, so one more eye level. So my DPS, my eye level and gear is not that great. Um, I did get a lucky uh, heroic scenario weapon that I upgraded and this trinket, which is awesome, upgraded. Um, I upgraded this one as well. Um, but yeah, I have not, like I still have PvP gear on, like a, actually a lot of it. Um, and I have my tier set now. Um, the uh actually I'll talk about tier set real quick. Um the TOT tier set I didn't look at the new um siege yet just because I don't I'm not on a raid team yet. Um but uh if you want to be pulling crazy numbers, um you should use your Soul Reaper um on cooldown at forty five percent. And uh you should also use it with your every kit you want to use it prefer preferably use your killing machines on Soul Reaper unless you have a strength buff. Um, strength buff increases obliterate at a much larger percentage than it does Soul Reaper. Um, so that is something that's important to know. So like if you have a bunch of procs of like your uh, DK rune and whatever trinkets you have that proc strength or your um, pillar of frost or whatever, you want to use obliterate for killing machine. And if you don't have those, remember this is about the execute phase for DK's. DK's execute starts at 45% with the tier. Um, you want to use Soul Reaper. So. Uh, that's another important thing to keep track of, and that's kind of it, guys. Uh, I do want to talk about uh, AOE DPS real quick. Just pretty much um, keep up your single target rotation, just maybe using Howling Blast a little bit more um, just, uh, immediately when you get your proc. Uh, and then around four or five, well, really like five or six targets, and you just want to start kind of replacing Obliterate with... Uh, Howling Blast, so I can use all your procs. Just, just spam Frost right to get more Howling Blasts out, and that's kind of it. Throw down your Death and Decay, um, and Remorse. <laughs>
This trash is going to take a long time to kill, and it's actually going to stay up pretty much until the phase changes or pillar changes. So uh, I decided that I'm going to AOE on the next group of ads, um, and you'll see. I'm just going to skip ahead to that. So right there, it shows you the ads are about to spawn, uh, or the ads have spawned, and the, I know they're going to fly into the boss. So I just dropped my D and D on the boss right as they get there. Um, but you know, it took a little pre-planning on that. Um, and then I'm just going to start using uh, my Howling Blast while I get Rhyme procs. And I haven't really sorted it out for my rotation yet because the ads um, are still di now dying a little bit quicker. Um, but since it was taking a little while, I figured I would you know, do my part and help out. So that's about it, guys. It covers uh, you know your AOE DPS rotation and uh, just about everything under the sun. So uh, let me know what you think, and if you need any help, don't be afraid to ask. You can always leave a comment in the section below, or uh, you know, send me a message, or try to message me in game. Um, but you know, I hope you guys liked it, and uh, just keep killing shit, guys.